The major issue for business leaders in biotechnology is the increasing complexity that it will face in the future. And it's increasing complexity because of the increasing, co increasing complexity of life science. It's because of the increasing complexity of what the market will ask for. The market will not ask for a single drug for treatment. It will ask for disease management. It will ask for a treatment, which means not only a drug, but also a diagnostic. It may require a device. It may require information technology. And if you take all these factors together, and you compare that with the current um, paradigm, so to speak, in which uh, biotech firms think in terms of a new drug, and that is shifting in term, uh, towards a new treatment, which is much more all-encompassing and much more comprehensive, then of course that increased complexity is something that is manager will, will face in the coming 10 or 20 years. And that will require a very specific type of managers those who are not only able to assess the market and understand the market, but also will be able to understand the science and be able to drive the research and development in their organization. While today, many of those managers are able to manage their firms from a financial point of view, but are mere spectators of the R&D that takes place in their firms. While in the future, these people will not only manage the firms, but also drive their research and development and be involved in the research and development of their companies. And that will require a completely new type of CEO, which will not be inter interchangeable with other companies, like it is today. Some, some CEOs come in from other industries and then enter biotech industry. I think these times have gone. In the future, biotech managers and biotech CEOs will be very specific biotech CEOs because of that combined knowledge of market and science. I was involved in the development of a number of drugs, uh, but the, the ones that I'm most proud of are the two HIV drugs that I developed together with, with some uh, colleagues at uh, Tibotech, which was the infectious diseases arm of uh, Johnson & Johnson. And um, we developed those two drugs in a very short time frame. And the reason why that was feasible wasn't only because there was a need for HIV drugs, but because of two other reasons. And the first reason was that we had identified the right people to join the team. We were absolutely sure that these people would make a difference as compared to other people that we would have been able to, add, to, to recruit in order to enter the team. But these people were really the top people that we could enter into, the, uh, in, include into the team. And the second reason was that we realized and we had the possibility to adapt our drug development process as it developed. Um, we did not consider the development of those drugs as a type of a kind of machinery that we needed to and procedure wise follow in order to get a drug to the market. We assessed the value of that drug very carefully at very specific times of its development uh, and that made us very confident that if we, take, if we took the next step in development that we were on the right track in order to get a drug to the market. So it's, it's based on the concept that drug development is, is a process but it's not a fixed process. It is a very smooth and fluent process and that is what we actually used to develop these drugs and at the same time we were strong in identifying the people that would help us in developing these two drugs. Attracting venture capital is one of the most difficult things a manager or a CEO and his team or her team can do or need to do. And the reason is that by attracting venture capital you bring in two cultures. You bring in a culture of pure finance, profit making, money making, the venture capital side, and you bring in another culture which is a science culture with great ideas, discoveries and not necessarily um, knowledge about what is needed in order to convince finance people to offer their money to the, to the company. So this is a very difficult uh, uh, situation and the only way that may ease that process is again uh, for the R&D people or the research people to try to reduce the complexity of their science up to a level that may convince 
non-science uh, individuals or finance people, uh, this on itself is an extremely difficult exercise. And when I talked to a CEO of uh, a major big pharma company uh, about one year ago, and when I asked him, how do you hire your scientists and how do you um, uh, assess the performance of your scientists, his reply wa was, well, I evaluate my sci scientists on two topics. And the first one is, are they good scientists, which is obvious. But the second topic was, how good are they capable of translating the, the complexities of their knowledge into an actionable program, into an actionable message. And I think this is something that is absolutely important in order to attract venture capital. Because like on the other side, at the side of venture capitalists, although there are people with PhDs in science um, joined with finance people, it is still very difficult for them because of the increasing complexity of science and because of the fact that they have been out of science for quite a while to be, let's say, readily open to that new science that is offered to them. So finding a shared frame of reference between these two uh, groups is extremely important. But it, 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 it may solve part of the problem, but effectively, effect, effectively the difficulty uh, is still there, meaning that you need to bring two different cultures together around one table.